In this video, I'll be showing you how I built this dog crate TV stand. Check it out. All right, for the top, I'm using two by eight for kiln dried lumber. Just grabbed this from my local Home Depot. Um, cutting this down to a more manageable size. I'm gonna joint these boards together using my track saw. So I brought it over to a little table I have, put some scrap plywood underneath it and set up my track saw. Moving these other sheets out of the way, I wound up doing a test run on the a scrap piece of plywood to make sure it worked according to plan. So I did a scoring cut first, and then I went back through, moved it a little bit with an overhang and cut all the way through, and it worked out really nicely. So I was satisfied with that, brought it back to the actual two by eights. I'm using two by eights and jointed each of these. So it's a technique that's been done before. I've personally never done it, but you essentially are putting the two boards that you're planning to joint together sort of closing them together and then running the blade down the middle so the blade is cutting into both boards. You can see all the clamps I'm using here. It's kind of tricky. You need to really finagle the clamps in a way that is applying pressure but not too much pressure. So clean up all the sawdust here. I thought this was really satisfying so I left this little clip in here. Definitely want to keep sweeping the sawdust out of the way because it gets really slippery in my garage if I don't. Next step is to do the actual glue up. So I'm using some parallel clamps here. I'm going to use dominoes. You definitely do not need to do this. Uh, I think it adds a little bit more to the project. Uh, so it's definitely not necessary. It helps with lining it up. It'd be perfectly fine with just glue, but I am putting some dominoes. These are five by 30 millimeter dominoes into the sides of the two by eights, and then I will glue them all up. I'm using Type Bond 2, which is my personal preference, and this one happens to be a brown color of Type Bond. So, in case it does bleed through, it's going to be stained espresso, which is a dark brown, and you won't really notice it. So, next up was to test out the drill press wire brush. So, I'd never used this before either. I'm cleaning up the metal bars that I'm using for the actual dog crate. And I'm just brushing off any kind of rust or anything like that. This is 3 8 inch steel. Um, you can find at your local Menards or Home Depot, Lowe's. And just running this through here real quick to get off any kind of sticker residue or rust. Next, I used some Rust-Oleum metal paint. This is a matte black. Really just doing this up front to test. Uh, next is to build the frame. Building the frame of the base, I'm just using some 2x4s. This is just construction lumber. Uh, you will see the edge of this, so you want to make sure it's straight. Once I cut this to size, I realized it was not laying flat. So I just ran it through the planer a couple times to make sure it was perfect, because this is the part that's going to be on the ground. So definitely want to make the project flat. Uh, you can't really account for a, a crooked or uneven floor, but at least making the project flat is important. So a couple passes through there make sure they're all the exact same thickness. And then I ran some pocket holes in there. I always do a test on a scrap piece with every project I do just to make sure I got my settings right and I'm not messing up a piece that I actually need for the project. So love this Craig jig. Makes it pretty pretty simple, uh, quick, quick and easy. Just ran it through, made sure the settings were right, using some pocket hole screws there. And then I'm using that same tight bond to wood glue clamping it together before I screw it because if I don't it tends to wiggle for whatever reason I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong there but you can see I have the frame set on boards because my garage floor has a lip near the seams of the concrete so definitely wanted to eliminate any variable there now I'm cutting down one by fours these are going to be used for the majority of the project this will be the front and side frames I'm cutting these to the appropriate lengths because I'm getting ready to drill the holes for the bars. Uh, this is a little jig I made real quick. I'm really thankful I took the time to do this. I uh, just threw some screws into plywood and then scrap one by fours. I'm using some Starbond adhesive there that will lock that into place. And it made it really, really easy. I was able to clamp that to my drill press table and get really even consistent holes. So that's super important. Definitely take the time to do that if you're doing a project like this. It was a, a really quick step, 
definitely, definitely worth it. Definitely recommend this. After I made sure that worked, I'm gonna cut the three by eight steel to size. So this is just an angle grinder. The actual cutter for this was only a couple bucks. I'd never cut steel before, but it's pretty straightforward. I just make sure the sparks aren't flying into your face. I had protective eye and ear protection on with these gloves. Um, made it really simple. Just clamped the piece to my table, marked it with a, a pencil or marker, and it came right off, no issues. So make sure there's nothing flammable nearby, any kind of uh, sawdust or anything. You'll see later in the video that I, I have a different setup when I'm cutting all the bars. But like I said, this is more of just a test to make sure my, my theory on how this would work actually worked. So looks kind of scary with the sparks, but uh, there's no issue. Even if the sparks get on you, you're not really going to get burned. There are little pieces of metal in some of those. So definitely don't want to intentionally point it at yourself. So got to be careful. Take it slow that's with anything that's new. Uh, just go really slow and you should be fine. Next up was back to the tabletop. I'm filling some of the holes. This is just kiln dried two by two by eights. So it's it's not perfect. This is just stuff right off the shelf at your local hardware store. So it's not perfect. Um, it's not a hardwood. Uh, this is what the customer's budget allowed. So I had to go through and fill in some of these gaps and let the sanding begin. There was so much sanding on this project. Uh, it's definitely my least favorite part of any projects. Uh, this is a Bosch sander. I think it's a six inch sander. I used some Abernet paper there, but back to the track saw, cutting it down to its final dimensions. Uh, this was super easy. Uh, definitely thankful I have the track saw for this part and using a bunch of different squares to make sure it's perfectly square. Uh, sanding both sides of the table here, getting it ready for stain. And I'll say this video clips are in the exact order I did them. So kind of might seem like I jumped around, but this is the exact order I did them to make things go as quick as possible. Um, here's the edge profile the customer chose. This is actually the underside of the table. It'll give it a little bit of a tapered look, which you may have noticed from the very first picture, or you'll notice here at the end, but went around on all sides there. This is a pretty big bit, and it's technically an, a Roman Ogi or Roman OG bit. Um, typically not a fan, but I really like the way this turned out. So went back and did the same exact profile on the bottom to give it that tapered look. I definitely recommend clamping this down to something. It made a huge sawdust mess. And you can see I have my dust collector hose there trying to get some of the sawdust as it comes out. I'm in my little two-car garage for all this. You can really tell here it's kind of cloudy. Even on the, the picture, I have a little window fan there trying to blow some of the sawdust out. Blew it out into the, uh, the driveway there. And nice little satisfying clip here sucking up the sawdust. <laughs> so hopefully you guys are subscribed already. If not, please uh, take a minute now to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. It definitely helps me out in the long run. And you guys will have first notification with any kind of new videos I post. So thanks so much. Next up is to set up the holes for the actual frames here. The, these are the bars. Uh, you can see I'm using the existing ones. This is the first one I did and I'm using as a template. I got a square here, got them all clamped together so they're not moving and lining this up perfectly. So I'm just marking the edges of the three by eight steel bars and I'll know to drill exactly in the center of those. It's really important you get this even, otherwise your, your bars will be slanted. Um, using a drill press here, this is just a cheap Harbor Freight drill press I actually grabbed on the Facebook Marketplace. Uh, but here we go, drilling holes into the frame. This is, like I said, one by four pine. You select pine to make the finishing process a little bit easier using a higher quality there. Um, doing the depth uh, one inch on the top ones and a half inch on the bottom. This will allow me some room to remove the bars uh, or add them in later so I can finish the project with a stain and clear coat uh, before having to avoid the bars. But I'm now doing some pocket holes for the one by three frame. Uh, these are all get screwed and glued together. Uh, back to the, the Craig jig here. Craig actually offers a really convenient template on their website if you're trying to figure out what settings to have your jig to or what size screws you need. I always refer back to that. Uh, 
I'm not sure if I'm just lazy or what, but I just don't want to have to remember that stuff. So <laughs> here I am clamping, gluing, and screwing. These are the pieces for the side, and then there'll be a, a middle insert as well. It'll be a removable divider for the crate. Um, so screwing those all together here. Got the garage open. Had really nice weather for this project, so it was super nice. But I'm using this plywood as the a flat surface, so I, I make sure they're they're lining up perfectly. Uh, now we're going back and trimming up the plywood for the bottom and the plywood for the back. So same situation here with the track saw. Make sure you're not cutting into anything underneath it that you shouldn't. So I have a couple pieces of scrap wood there. And now I'm going to glue and screw this plywood into the base. This is the, the base that we did the, or I did the, the profile with that Roman OG bit. And I'm gluing and screwing. I just marked off with a pencil where it is so I knew where to put the glue. It's obviously upside down here. I'm going to drill some pilot holes with a countersink bit and then drill the screws in. And you can see here my camera fell off the table. <laughs> Next is to go around and sand everything using the, I'm using the Abernet uh, paper. It's worked out really well for me with the little shop vac hooked up to it. Uh, this is, like I said, kind of an annoying process. The pine is in really good shape because I got a higher quality pine, but it almost has like a some kind of finish or something on it. So I wanted to get that off. But here's the face frame. Uh, it looks uh, really good to me. It's looking exactly like I, I wanted it to. I'm gluing and screwing in pocket holes to hold this together. And it's going to screw, pocket holes screw into the base as well. So uh, using glue is much as I can, that's going to make it as strong as possible. And uh, just a reminder, we know that wood glue joints are stronger than wood. You can look that one up. But here it is so far. Uh, it's pretty much it. There's the slot for the middle divider here, and it'll just pull right out the front. So this, this worked out really well. The customer was really great with helping give me uh, artistic liberty and allowing me to sort of figure it out and bounce ideas off him. So really thankful for that because something I hadn't done before. So next is to stain everything. Uh, there's me mixing it. I don't know if you can tell I'm even moving, but mix up the stain. Always mix it really good up front. You don't want to cause any bubbles in that or it will show up in the stain. I'm just using a cotton t-shirt that I have cut up, uh, which is what I always use. Always wear gloves and I'm just doing one coat. This is Minwax Espresso Pain. And this actually took quite a while. This took around two hours, this whole process here. So you can see the sun going down and then I wound up closing the garage, but the three quarter inch plywood stained really well. I'm really thankful for that. Um, it came out really even. This is a red hardwood plywood, really strong, great product for this project. Uh, definitely gotta get the underside of the tabletop. And here it is. So looking exactly as expected. Um, if there's any kind of holes where the pocket holes, I used a little Q-tip to make sure the stain got in there really well and had to stain the doors. And then here we are cutting down the rest of the bars. So the bars that I did at the beginning of this video were just a couple testers to make sure it worked before I got too far into the project and had to change something. But you can see here, I'm using the same grinder. I have a, a piece of scrap wood blocking off my dust collector so none of the sparks get into that and then back to the drill press with that wire brush attachment this is just a cheap wire brush you can grab from any home store and using the gloves for sure i stuck my hand into the wire brush a couple times thank goodness i had the gloves on because that would not have felt good but this step really took a long time too but i think really paid off with the way the finish looked on the bars. The paint I used came, went on really smooth, but here we are adding biscuit jointer slots. These are slots to attach the top to the base. I use a cheap biscuit jointer here I grabbed from Home Depot and it cuts the perfect slot and it works really, really well. I do this for all the tables I use and it allows the wood to move, which is necessary with humidity changes. So wood naturally moves. We want to be able to give it the space to move. Otherwise it's going to warp your entire project. All right, I'm about to run this Total Boat product through the True Coat 360 VSP 
onto the dog crate slash TV stand. It says mix it up for three to five minutes. So I'm basically just swishing it around in the bag it comes with and I'll pour it directly in there. I'm not gonna thin it or anything. Um, and I'll probably wind up doing three coats of this, uh, maybe a couple extra on the bottom of the dog crate for uh, extra protection against the dog's nails and if they go to the bathroom or anything like that. But it uh, should be pretty quick. It has, uh, you can recoat in as little as one hour, which is a really nice thing about this one. So I should be able to get all the coats I want on today. And you don't have to sand in between them, which is great. So it's sort of like a self-leveling uh, kind of product and hopefully it'll turn out really nice. But this is one of the last steps. I'll let this cure overnight and then uh, put on all the hardware tomorrow. So I wasn't able to get all the coats on that day, unfortunately. I can't even remember how many coats I did. It was definitely more than three. I think I did probably eight or nine on the top and the base of the actual crate inside. Here's uh, what it actually looks like. So it sprayed on really well. Uh, this is a little bit more of an expensive project. I wanted to make sure it was really well protected um, compared to what I normally use. So. I, I do recommend it. Like I said, it's a little bit more expensive. It was nice not to have to uh, sand in between each coat. And here we are, my wife helping me put the top on and giving her sage advice on to which side should be up front. So <laughs> here I am installing the Z-Clips. These will hold the top on tight, but not too tight. So we want it to be able to move. Like I said, with the humidity, it's really important. Otherwise, like I said, it will warp the project. We don't want that. Next up is to install the doors. You can see I already put all the metal poles in there. I'm using business cards to create an even gap around the door. So when I hang it, it's not gonna be knocking into the frame when you open and close it or rubbing against that. Otherwise, it's just gonna rub off your finish and not last over time. So grab these hinges and hardware off of Amazon. Got here really quickly, worked really nice. Uh, same with the actual door pole there. So I'm using a piece of scrap wood, two pieces of scrap wood with clamps there on the side to make sure it's holding in properly and it's lining up exactly even the way I want it to and worked really nicely. So really happy with the way it turned out. This is what it looks like when it's finished. You can see there's some locks at the top there. Again, an Amazon purchase and the removable insert really just disappears. So really happy with the way that turned out and so was the customer. So that makes me even happier. Uh, keep in mind when you add finish, it's adding, uh, to the surface. So it makes that tighter. So consider that when you're figuring out your dimensions for your projects, but thank you so much for watching Again, if you're not already, please subscribe. I really appreciate it and God bless. Thanks for watching.